John Wilmot was born on the 1st of April 1647 in Ditchley House, Oxfordshire, into a fairly wealthy aristocratic family. His father was Henry Viscount Wilmot, a royalist, political figure and military commander, and his mother, Anne Lee St John, was of noble origins, being the daughter of a member of parliament and prominent royalist called Sir John St John, first baronet. In 1652, John Wilmot's father became the Earl of Rochester, owing to his service to King Charles II during his exile. He has been described as a war hero who single-handedly engineered the future Charles II's escape. From a young age, young John received a good education. When he was seven years old, he was privately tutored, and then at the age of nine, he attended a nearby grammar school in Burford. In 1658, his father passed away in Bruges due to an illness he picked up while commanding an English foot regiment. The conditions there were unhygienic and overcrowded, which caused many soldiers to fall ill. When John Wilmot turned 11, he succeeded his father's title, becoming the second Earl of Rochester. Two years later, Rochester was admitted as a fellow commoner to Wadham College, Oxford. He was 12 years old at the time of his admission, but soon his habits and lifestyle changed. After less than a year at Oxford, when he was only just 13 years old, he grew debauched. Apparently, it was at this age that he hired his first prostitute and turned atheist. His college was relatively new, and because of this, many of his peers, Rochester included, blazed out their youth. It was here that Rochester's love of alcohol and intimate relations began, and it characterised a lot of his later life. A year later, in 1661, the Chancellor of the University awarded him with an Honorary Masters of Arts degree. These were awarded to students of a certain standing after completing their Bachelor of Arts degree. At this point in time, its main purpose was to grant membership of the university. With no father figure, Charles II, now the King, kindly took it upon himself to watch over Rochester. He granted him a handsome annual pension of £500 as a thanks for his father's actions. This pension was very useful because many of his father's lands had been lost due to debt, meaning his wealth was very small compared to his aristocratic counterparts. Now 14 years old, Rochester went on a three-year grand tour of France and Italy, financed by the king. Over these three years, he learnt a lot about French literature and European attitudes. This knowledge would go on to have a big impact on his future works. Then, in 1664, he finally returned to London, making his way to Charles II's Restoration Court. With Rochester now in court, Charles II tried to secure him a marriage to a renowned beauty and wealthy heiress called Elizabeth Mallet. Rochester soon became infatuated with her and asked for her hand in marriage. However, the heiress refused. This was in part due to her relatives opposing the match, as Rochester wasn't very rich. Upset by this, he decided to mastermind her abduction. An account of the attempt from May 1665 was described by Samuel Pepys. Elizabeth Mallet was going home to her lodgings with her grandfather by coach, and was at Charing Cross, seized on by both horse and footmen, and forcibly taken from him and put into a coach with six horses and two women provided to receive her and carried away. Lord Rochester was taken at Uxbridge and the Lord sent to the tower. Of course, the King was infuriated by this. In response, he had Rochester, who was 18 at the time, be locked away in the Tower of London. After three weeks, Rochester wrote a letter of apology to the King and as no harm had come to Elizabeth, he was released. Now back at court, he lived life to the full. His group at the Restoration Court were called the Ballers, or the Merry Gang. This group of aristocratic men were renowned for their drunkenness, vivacious conversation, and libertine attitude. The king would frequently entertain guests, and he expected his friends 
to be witty, discreet, and to be able to match his drinking habits. The Merry Gang fulfilled all requirements. Later that year, Rochester volunteered for the Navy in the Second Dutch War. During the Battle of Wagen, his courage was noted and he was considered a war hero. Following this spell at sea, he was appointed Gentleman of the Bedchamber. This position was reserved essentially for peers. Its activities included waiting on the king when he ate in private, helping him to dress, guarding the bedchamber, and providing companionship. In the summer of 1666, Rochester was again involved in the navy. For a second time, he demonstrated his bravery during battle. One of his greatest feats included rowing between vessels under heavy cannon fire to deliver vital messages. Upon returning to London, he reignited the liaison with Elizabeth Mallet, who eventually forgave him. She then defied her family's wishes, and in January 1667, the couple got married. They went on to have four children. Despite his marriage, Rochester still took on many lovers. He believed that even after marriage, he shouldn't be limited to one woman. One of his most well-known lovers was a young actress called Nell Gwynne. Soon after this, she became the mistress of Charles II. They remained friends, which benefited Rochester, as it helped him maintain influence within court. Now married, Rochester divided his time between his home in Oxfordshire and the King's Court in London. While at home with his wife, he tried to be a devout father, but in London, he was a completely different person. It was said that when he passed Brentford, the devil entered into him. His riotous existence was characterised by frequent drinking and whoring. One man at court, called Gilbert Burnett, later noted that Rochester was continually drunk for five years and not perfectly master of himself, which led him to do many wild and uncontrollable things. This depraved lifestyle, which started in his early teens, led to him being banished from court several times. One incident occurred in 1669 after a formal dinner in the king's company. After the banquet, the men drank and were pretty merry, but a man by the name of Tom Killigrew had been teasing and light-heartedly mocking Rochester. He took offence and then struck him in the ear. Rochester's ill behaviour was seen as insulting and he was immediately banned from court, yet the king soon called for his return. Rochester was renowned for his promiscuity. He stated that he had swived more whores, more ways than Sodom's walls ever knew. Furthermore, he is said to have slept with as many prostitutes as he possibly could, preferring this over trying to seduce the great ladies of court. Another one of Rochester's mistresses was the actress Elizabeth Barry. Rochester was a brilliant poet who was also interested in theatre. In 1673, the Earl helped Barry with her career, and two years later, she became his favourite mistress. Rochester enjoyed her company and affection. He stated that, with her, he had a happy minute of life. The liaison lasted for around five years, in which time they had a daughter. Yet, as time went on, Barry became more successful, making Rochester grow jealous and hostile towards her. In December of 1673, Rochester managed to put himself in another unfavourable position with the king. On this occasion, he accidentally delivered a satire to Charles II called In the Isle of Britain. Apparently, he mixed up his poems and gave the king a verse that essentially criticised him for being obsessed with sex at the expense of his kingdom. This mockery of the king led to the Earl's exile from court yet again. Before he was allowed to return, he spent his time at his estate in Adderbury, where he continued to write. Throughout his life, Rochester wrote a great number of infamous poems. Many of these reflected his rakish way of life and were admired for how sexually open they were. One of his best known works was Sodom, or the quintessence of debauchery. At the time of its publication, in the mid-1670s, 
it became the first ever published piece of a highly erotic nature in the English language. However, Rochester's better known for his work, A Satire Against Mankind. This poem has been described as one of the best philosophical attacks on humanity ever written, and in its contents, he contrasts human perfidy with animal wisdom. This was one of the few poems that he published in his name. During his lifetime, the majority of his work was anonymous, circulating in a variety of forms, such as manuscripts. In June 1675, Rochester was in a rage after having a rant. He made his way to the middle of Whitehall Palace's garden and destroyed the king's prized sundial, which was recognised as one of the rarest in Europe. Rochester fled court again. A year later, his position with the king was at an all-time low. In 1676, Rochester got into a scuffle with night watchmen. One of his companions was impaled by a pike and killed. Rochester quickly fled the scene, making his way to Tower Hill. Following this incident, Rochester stayed in eastern London, making sure to maintain a low profile. He disguised himself as Dr. Alexander Bendo, an Italian quack doctor who could cure infertility and other gynaecological disorders. To make things less suspicious, he would also dress up as Mrs. Bendo, so that the woman's husbands wouldn't suspect him. As Dr. Bendo, he managed to inspect many young women, as it was stated that he wasn't without success, meaning he did have relations with his so-called patients, using the excuse that he was acting as a secret sperm donor. Now in his 30s, he was suffering from many venereal diseases. His health quickly went downhill, and it's said that he famously attended Parliament with his rotting nose. This was of course a result of his rakish lifestyle. By the time he was 33, he was extremely ill due to the effects of alcohol abuse and syphilis. Supposedly, on his deathbed, he received many clergymen in his home and converted back to Christianity. During this time, he renounced his libertine lifestyle and even asked for his writings to be burnt, yet it's uncertain whether this wish was fulfilled. We can't be sure that his conversion to Christianity ever happened, as he was so ill at the time, it may have all been fabricated by his friends. John Wilmot, the Earl of Rochester, passed away on the 26th of June 1680, at the age of 33. He was buried at Spelsbury Church in Oxfordshire. Following his death, his poetry was finally published under his name. Furthermore, during the Victorian era, many of his poems, especially Sodom, were censored and destroyed due to it being seen as obscene. He has been described as a man of incredible wit and as the best English satirist of his time. His life has been the subject of various plays, books and biographies. Most recently, the 2014 Blazing Star, The Life and Times of John Wilmot, Earl of Rochester. Furthermore, the 2004 film called The Libertine was based on his life. Thank you everyone for watching this video on the Earl of Rochester. If you enjoyed, leave me a like. If you're new to the channel, why not subscribe? If you have any suggestions, please leave me a comment or an email, which is in the description. That's all from me. I'll see all of you in the next Forgotten Life. Thanks.